It's happy hour again from Uptown New Orleans. Hello, I'm Grant Morris. Happy hour is part of the family of shows on the podcast network. It's NewOrleans.com. When you walk into a bar in New Orleans and you pull up a bar stool, you never know who's going to be sitting on either side of you. What you do know is no matter what they look like, what they're wearing, whether they just got out of a limousine or just got out of jail, they're going to be happy to talk to you because that's New Orleans and this is happy hour, a cocktail-fueled 60 minutes of random conversation with folks who have nothing in common. Other than we're all New Orleanians in a bar today, we're at the fabulous Wayfair on Ferret Street. Stacy, help me out. What does it say over my, above my head there? Wayfair Happy Hour. Talking to the microphone, sorry. Wayfair Happy Hour, 3 to 6 every day. They have a 3 to 6 hour happy hour. No, that's not that. They have a 3 hour happy hour here every day from? 3 to 6. 3 to 6 p.m. Say that. 3 to 6 p.m. every day. Okay. Can you say it a bit more convincingly? They have a 3 hour happy hour here They have a 3 hour happy hour every day, 3 to 6. That's nice. Okay. And on the weekends, they have brunch. Do Doesn't they? say that. What do they have at happy hour? Half price on all drinks and half price on starters and bar fare. Thank you very much. And where are we, Keith? Uh, Wayfair on the new Ferret Street. Which Thank you. Doesn't very look much. like Ferret Street. Used I to know look it's like, a yes. totally whole new look. Isn't it? That was the voice of Keith Sparrow, who's a music writer from The Advocate, and Stacy Johnson, who's got a fantastic job. She's a tasting room manager at Celebration Distillation and Old New Orleans Rum. And if you take a look, you'll see we have a bunch of free booze here on the table, which we're going to get through. And AF the naysayer is also here, Yay. whose real name is Amal. Amal, what's your real name? Amal Abdul Khalik. That's right. You got it right. I yeah. know. I got it right hey, first time. First try. I'm right. really rocking today. But AF the naysayer is the name that you perform under. True story. I know. We've been through this a lot of times about why would you have a negative name like naysayer. Oh, <laughs> see so we're not, go- <laughs> we're not going through that. We're not going through all that again. But, um, but Amal, you look a lot better than last time I saw you. Oh, yeah. What have you done? You've lost uh, a lot of weight or something. Yeah, 80 pounds, maybe 80 60. pounds? I don't, I don't really weigh myself. I don't know. Who weighs you? Uh, yeah. You don't weigh yourself. Who's, who's doing the weight? No, no one. No one. So how, do go, you know lost, how do you know you lost 80 pounds? How do you know you lost 80 pounds? Somebody was like, you, just, you, look, you look like you lost 80 pounds. Like, uh, oh. So you haven't really. You've lost oh, yeah. 8 pounds, maybe. Probably. I don't, well, I don't know. No you look at some photos. You, know, you looked a, a lot fatter than last time. <laughs> I was, I was definitely a lot fatter last <laughs> so time. So how did you do it? <laughs> Plant-based diet. Plant-based diet. Yeah, yeah. Are you guys on a diet, Keith? Does that it? include cows that eat plants or just <laughs> strictly plants? <laughs> no, no, you would think. But no, just, just strictly <laughs> plants. Fruits and vegetables only. That's, that's it. No grains. Yeah, it was, wow. Yeah. He looks pretty good, doesn't he? Uh, I mean, what this isn't the first I've looked at him up close. So but yeah. yeah, I mean, there's I, no I before it. and after you can't see. So. Have you it's, never, so Keith, you're a music writer, right? Yeah. So you see, you see all the music there is to see in New Orleans. Have you ever seen him out play? Obviously, I've not seen all of it. the naysayer. Obviously, I've not seen all of it yet. You've missed the naysayer. I've missed the naysayer. Well, we're going to have to play you a I'm not a naysayer when it comes to the naysayer but right. I, <laughs> right. I have not seen him yet what do you think of the name as a professional music writer what do you think of the name AF the naysayer you remember it which is important uh-huh. so okay. yeah 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 more power to you absolutely okay. well I remembered Keith and Stacy as well <laughs> Stacy what do you play anything I do not no, um, a cocktail shaker wait wait wait, wait. <laughs> hey, wait what, about, what about like middle school and high school no instruments at all uh, no not really I, I played the volleyball Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Not the, the recorder? <laughs> no, everybody no, plays. I think they did that yeah, in like grade like choir school for like two weeks. Like recorder, recorder. Yeah, no, come no. on. I was not good at it. So. Well, no one's good at the recorder. It sounds no, like shit no. always, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay. Why do they make Camp Town races? Come can on. Can you that's still awesome. play that on the recorder? Uh, no, I can't play anything. I Me, think they do it to challenge your parents. Yes. sort of the drive you crazy test. Yes, yes. I guess it's the simplest instrument. It's just a stick with holes in it. After all, right? Uh, what yeah, did you start on, right? Uh, trumpet. That sounds complicated. Yeah, it was a little. Well, do you play instruments now? I mean, I play the keys. Okay, cool. So there you go. Somebody on the show. I play the laptop, too. <laughs> yeah. Somebody on this show. That's my instrument, told yes. You're yes, the, laptop. the laptop, yes. Someone told us on this show that trumpet players have the biggest ego of all musicians. Oh, I think that's I mean, drummers. You, know, you think that's true? Well, you think that's who? <laughs> drummers. Drummers? Yeah. Yeah. Really? I've dated a couple. Oh. Okay. Have you? No. Oh, well. <laughs> No, lead what? guitarist would be up there too. Yeah, I would think. I, mean, I would yeah, think lead, lead guitarist, guitarist, trumpet player. Like trumpet trumpet player is like the lead guitarist of a jazz band. So that's right. true. Yeah, it's a similar concept, it's, I think. Yeah, Miles Davis is pretty egotistical. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, Irvin you know, Mayfield yeah. is not. So that runs. <laughs> <to> the, uh, <laughs> sorry. He's very shy and retired. Oh, very shy. Yeah. Very man. shy. 
So well, which drummers did you date, Stacey? Anybody we know? None worth mentioning. <laughs> oh, you've got to be kidding. What are you drinking? Not like Phil Collins. Right? I'm having <laughs> their, um, the hospitality, their hospitality drink. It's with Pisco, a pineapple-infused Pisco. And it's called hospitality drink? I don't, it's a... You just asked them for anything at the bar. I pointed at the one that looked delicious. <laughs> Snapped like hospitality, please. I it's need got, the hospitality cocktail. It's got something floating in it, like a little. It's the allspice. allspice. It has they have a allspice dram syrup that they make. So mm. it's, huh. it's really. It, look, it looks delicious. It's like their version of a tiki cocktail. So it's we, very welcoming as a hospitality yeah, drink should yeah. be, perhaps. All right, yes. it's yes. warm and looking, isn't it? <laughs> yes. On a cold day like this. Huh. Did you date two drummers at the same time? Ooh. No, I have no. Sounds like a headache. <laughs> that would be interesting. I feel like dating two people at the same time is a headache. Have you, are you, have you ever done that? <laughs> Can I plead the fifth? <laughs> Not really. No, you can't. There maybe has been overlap on like the end of one and the beginning, beginning of another. another. Yeah, but yeah. that's pretty common. No. One was like the, the encore transition. for the other. If we're exactly. going to keep it in musician yeah. terms, it was an encore Talk situation. Talk about a reality yeah. check for him. Yeah. Cool. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's not uncommon, though, right? What are you now? Are you single or dating someone or what? Mostly single. Mostly single. Mostly single. Ambiguous. What Ambiguous that? answer. Yeah. yeah. I'm s- Meaning what? Seeing someone with no, no, no defining terms. No <laughs> conditions. No right. strings. Yes. What's he going to yes. think when he hears this and hears that you're mostly single? Insulted or relieved? Probably relieved. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, what's his opinion? Well, okay, we're both on the same page. Right. Yeah. I didn't realize this was love lines. I didn't, I didn't realize that's what we were doing. No. Yeah, yeah. Well, why don't you say you date two drummers? Well, you're right. That's sort of opened the floor. You got to go. You got to go. Yeah, you brought it on yourself. This conversation. <laughs> was yeah. it something that that's two more drummers than I've ever dated, actually. So, you're yes. not missing out. Does okay. your wife play an instrument? Not at all. Nothing. Not so there's no all. music, abil- musical ability. What about the kids? Any of you? Uh, oldest kid plays piano. Oh, at least so yes, at least someone in the family in has some musical something. talent. Right. Yes, yes. How many kids do you got? Three? Uh, so many. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Three. Three at last count. Yes. Three is a lot. Three is a lot. Yes. In these day and age. I mean, back in the you know, farm yeah. days, it wasn't that many. But, well, then you uh, needed yeah. a bunch of kids to work on the farm. Absolutely. But now you've got to actually pay the, to keep them. Yes. They're very, <laughs> very expensive. Ex- three yes. kids is ex- more expensive than two, I would imagine, mm. right? I mean, one expensive. You, yeah. Do you ever think about selling one of them into the sex trade or something? Uh, on different days, different ones. Yes, right. I've, I've considered selling, yes. So when you're working for the newspaper, has anyone talked to you about sex slavery as a writer, as a journalist? On the music beat, it doesn't come up that often. Not much. No, no. not often. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I must say all the things I've written about, uh, which you know certainly vary outside or straight outside the music Realm. I, mean, I just did a big thing on Sidney Torres recently, and uh, ah. but uh, I've not done the sex trade industry yet. Okay. Are you familiar with any of the sex slave trade, Stacy? I know that it's not good. Yep. But right. you don't. You wouldn't know where to get a sex slave. I wouldn't. Uh, no. Amal, are you familiar with that? No, I do not Nothing. know anything. About you don't that. move in the circles of sex slavery. <laughs> no. All right. Well, I just thought it's worth asking. I'm kind of like. Good on slavery in general. Slavery, it's from like the original slavery. Oh, yeah. Well, that was a whole, that's a whole different thing. Yeah. Whole different thing. Whole what's, different your thing. Your position, what's your position on slavery? <laughs> I'm not for it. Not for no, it. No, it's <laughs> not pretty, pretty. Ben Carson is a different story, you know. What did, he, what did he, I just saw the he, headline. What did yeah, he actually say? He I said, couldn't uh, believe he said it. He said, <laughs> we're immigrants. Right, slaves were the original that's immigrants. That or something like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Something along those lines. Yeah, yeah. you yeah. compared them to other immigrants. That's yeah. They immigrated here with the with the, the American uh, dream, with the dream that their no. children were going to be able to build their lives. <laughs> he yeah. didn't really say that. Yes, he did. And he meant yeah, it. Yeah. And he's a neurosurgeon, <laughs> and not only that, but he's also at the Secretary of something housing, housing, housing. And development, and yeah. urban, urban development, urban development, which makes no sense. Should he be the Surgeon General? But you know, I don't know. Shit. He actually he, said that. Yeah, he made some curious comments. You know, when he was a presidential candidate as well. Oh, so yeah. So well, just kind sure. of That's continuing. Yeah, he's not yeah. like a different guy now that right. he's a secretary. Good. He's still the same dude that made the crazy comments before. I so. knew he was going to say something like that. But it's just like, oh, well, thank you for reminding me. I, I thought I forgot. For Do you second. think he's got mental problems? Or no, what's wrong? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I, you know, I'll have, I, I have to talk to him one day. I'm going to give him a call, you know. But he, he has an alternative view on life. Shall we say, yeah. Oh, I'd have to see. He would have to. He really said that slaves came here, like, with a dream. <laughs> yes. With a dream for their children. Yeah. He really said that. A yeah. dream of escaping, maybe. I mean, that was about the only dream he could have possibly <laughs> had. I mean, what the that hell? I mean, just, you know. You're right? Just, I mean, what, I mean what, did he, what did he have meant by that? Yeah, it's crazy. I, I guess what I'm just sitting here wondering, how, what was he thinking? 
He wasn't thinking. He wasn't. It. That's well, that's what. I mean, was it's it? the alternative administration. So I, I, the whole I think, thing is yeah. is getting better by the day. Was it? Was it out of context? Did he really say it, or was it? No, I don't think it was out of context. He just said it somehow. That it was not out of awesome. context. Like no, no, it was straight was, up. Yeah, it was yeah. part well, of a speech. Yeah, yeah. How do you feel as a, a member of the press now? Now that everybody, the president of the United States, hates the press, <laughs> and it's apparently open season on the media now. Someone uh, texted me a, a picture of this uh, crocheted little, like a nice little crochet thing with flowers on it that said, um, you know, the downside, uh, how did it go? It was, uh, you know, being a journalist means you work long hours for little pay. But on the other hand, everyone hates you. So it's <laughs> like, okay. Uh, That's uh, really funny. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. It is what it is. I mean, it, yeah, I, I don't. The media has certainly, certain members of the media have done things uh, that have only given media critics ammunition. Um, you know, I mean, not every member of the media is always right and always does things the right way. But by and large, obviously, journalism plays an important role in democracy and in the country. So to belittle it as an institution uh, is crazy. Is it working? What's that? Is, is, it, is the criticism, is Trump's criticism of the press and the media working, or do people just don't give a shit what he says already? What it's done, I think, is elevate these alternative media sources that aren't really actual, that aren't really actually journalism. I mean, these, these sites that have an agenda and all these sort of things, that to kind of equate them with legitimate news organizations is, I think, kind of a dangerous thing, because you see people getting these ideas from these crazy sites that aren't verified and aren't proven and are just well, based on what, rumor but this is what innuendo. Trump is saying about the regular press is that they have unquoted and unnamed sources and they just print anything they right want so it. he's basically dragging down like New York Times and, and Washington Post and ABC News and all this to the same level as some of these like alternative websites right. that are strictly fabrications and are strictly uh, out there with an agenda with a certain point of view yeah but is it working are people buying it are people are fewer people reading the paper or watching the news or I think Make that no people difference. that are inclined, people are inclined to have their own points of view reinforced. So they'll go along with things that reinforce their own points of view. Um, you know, I mean, that's just the way it is, unfortunately. Didn't we used to read the paper for the news, for the facts? And <laughs> we did, and you still just, can. Now actually. we're just reading it to reinforce our own. Yeah, no, no. You, but, but see, again, but that's the difference, though. I mean, you know, when you have a mainstream paper like you know the one I work for, the New Orleans Advocate, or your major dailies in major metropolitan areas, you know, those are papers that are still based on facts. And there is an opinion page that has opinions and commentary that is labeled as such. Right. And you can argue that papers have a bias by what they, what stories they choose to write and which ones they don't write and all that sort of thing. And, yeah, maybe. But by and large, the information that you're going to get is verified and real as opposed right. to some of these other sites. Do you get the paper, Stacey? No. <laughs> where, do you, where do you get your information from? You're under the age of 40, right? I am. Yeah, I'll say well. Do you get a, do you get the New York Times subscription? All right, there you go. So, the print Times, the print one, the real one. No, 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 uh, online. Online. Okay. Online. Yeah. Right. I, no, no print. It's just waste. Hmm. So, you right. know, I, I I like tactile, but you know, it's just but I'd rather not I don't want to throw away a newspaper. So, but what do you put on your paper during, or put on the table during a crawfish, crawfish boil? boil. I don't eat crawfish. So uh, oh, that's uh, right. Plant they're not plants. They don't eat plants. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, oh, they are plants. Yes. <laughs> they are not plants. So you don't eat anything except for plants. Yeah, um, Ever. Every once in a while, I'll have like like some kind of grain, usually like quinoa, but usually just like uh, lots of cabbage, yeah. lots of bananas. And is this a re- is this a religious thing as well? Uh, no, not really. Not at it's all. just. Um, I guess there's like some spirituality involved in it, but no, it, it started off as holistic healthcare. Right. So I used to have really bad mucus abundance, the sinus, nostril problems, and um, I was hanging out with my friend. Uh, he let me read a book, and I was like, oh, well, it changed my life. So there you go. What, <laughs> what was the book? Uh, it's a guy, uh, Professor Arnold Eric, uh, mucus free. It's like the guide to the mucus free health system. Uh, I always mess up. Always mind if I write this down? You, the guide <laughs> to the mucus free health, health system. system. I believe it was written I in 1912. You got some mucus problems, Grant? No, but it does sound like a bestseller, doesn't it? Well, it may have been in the day mucus. back in 1912. Like, yeah, I think yeah. it was around like 1912. Maybe it was like in. Maybe it might be like 1920s. It was around that time frame. So. You don't get the word mucus in many titles. 
Right? No, I feel like we've said it lyrics. a lot yeah. more than I have heard it in <laughs> jo- even the last one minute. <laughs> yes. Right. How many times do you use the word mucus? Only when I'm really talking about my son. Your son? Yeah, I have a two-year-old. He's, people he's talk pretty he's mucusy. Got, he's got mucus yeah. problems. Yeah. <laughs> you, think, you think about kids, you know, snotty. Yeah. Right. You know. But yeah. still, we don't say yeah, mucus here. Yeah. So, did yeah. you have a lot of mucus when you were a kid, Amal? I was always stopped up all the time. Like even last time you saw me, I just couldn't breathe through my nose. Yeah, so I really? guess yeah, all the time. Even last time I saw you, you were faking breathing through your nose the whole time. I, no, I was you. probably I was like <laughs> the whole time. So. And that was from what? Meat. Uh, like, dairy. You know, they said dairy. Dairy. Dairy, dairy, dairy is a big thing. Meat. Uh, just uh, uh, grain like wheat. Things of that nature. So, right. And once I cut all that out, I was like, but what, which one causes the mucus though? It's a big difference between dairy and. Well, there's like well, no, so like um, there's like, well, according to like research, there's like certain things cause more than others. Like dairy is like one of the highest causers. They're saying meat is also like really high and causing like different kind of meat causes more than other meat. Um, but like the main mm. ones is like dairy and meat. So what's a big mucus meat? And also like rice. Rice is not rice one. is yeah, a big like, mucus. Yeah, causer. rice is big mucus. Yeah, uh, yeah. So. Okay, you know a lot about this now. Well, I mean, I had the one book. He read the book. One book. Well, I read. Well, I read <laughs> a couple. I read a, I read a couple. Health. I read a couple different books, and there's uh, people who revised it, uh, like Doctor Sebi. He's he's another guy who revised it. There's uh, another guy, uh, Professor Spira. He also wrote uh, some. So you know a lot you know, about this. Why don't I, well, I did a little research. I don't know a lot. I just I try things out. My body reacts, and then I was like, oh, shouldn't eat that. And I feel weird. Like, <laughs> really? Oh. Yeah. And so there's sometimes where like. I might, uh, like, I might slip up, eat some bread, like, a little bit, and I'll feel it the next day. I'm like, oh, damn, it's kind of crazy. Why well, you're a sensitive guy. Well, I, you, you get sensitive. I don't, like, I don't once you anything. Once you, no, once you detox, like, you, get, you, uh-huh. get, you, you start getting real sensitive to things. Like, if you're used to feeling a certain way all the time, it's normal. And then once things go away, you're like, wait a minute, that's weird. And that's what happens, so. So no rice, though? No, no rice. So red beans and... Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm not Just really. I'm not even eating beans. Oh, so. beans? oh wow! Yeah, so huh. you've narrowed it down. To <laughs> That's why, like, I was. <laughs> yeah, you are skinny. Now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So no beans, no. Beans what, aren't plants. What's wrong with beans? Well, n- nothing's wrong with them, but like they do, they they can be slightly, you know, moderately mucus forming apparently, and uh, so I know I react a certain way when I like when I have mucus. too much. Like anything is starchy. I really not try to stay away from things that are really starchy. So. All right. You know, even like starchy plants. Are you sort of on the edge? You're going crazy here. With this? No, I was, the thing is, it's like obsessive. I, I'm I mean. doing it. No, no, it's like it's like I feel good. Like sometimes I want to wake. I want to wake up. Yeah. Eats bread. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah, so but it's like a lot of times, like I have, I have like some friends. I have some friends that are like, hey, let's go eat out. I like eating out, hanging out with friends. A lot of times, I'll just have potlucks and we'll just have come over right. and just. I usually do that, but every once in a while, like thing is like if you eat like that every day, you're gonna feel a certain way. If you eat like that yeah. every once in a while, it's not so bad. So you can get in, rid of it. So in the grand, well, in the grand scheme of slipping up in New Orleans, having a little bread isn't so bad. Probably. No, it's I mean, not. You can not slip up with a lot worse <laughs> things. It's a pretty yeah, tough city to be fall off a lot more I'm serious I'm wagons. I'm than, I'm yeah. You know, I've always been straight edge, like like my whole life. So I've already been kind of like regimented and strict with most things in my right. life already. And that's just but you how travel I around the country. It says here in my vast information I have about you that you've been to seventy cities in the last little while. Yeah, is that right? That's true. So. That's the United States. Where, They're where only have, talking about the United USA. Where have you been? And just in the U.S. Where have you been? Anywhere great? Anywhere you could move to? I mean, nah, I like New Orleans. is great. I don't, where I don't, would you I don't move to if you had to move to one of these 70 cities? That I doing? think it depends on my situation in those cities, you know? Mm, like, I would like, if it was just, like, how a place looked, I'd be like, oh, okay, uh, Missoula, Montana is, like, very beautiful. I would love to oh, be okay. there. You know, I wasn't so. expecting that. Stacey, <laughs> where you, have you been to Missoula, Montana? No, I have not. Keith? Uh, not Missoula, but northern Colorado is not that far, so no, that's not. pretty cool. Okay. So, yeah. What's in Missoula? Missoula? This is, uh, you know, for, like, western Montana, it's like there's a college there, so it's like a, it's a lot more diversity in the rest okay. of the state. So rest you wouldn't the be the freakiest-looking guy in Missoula, Montana? I probably, probably still would be. You still would be. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Could you get your quinoa there or in your... Pant, oh, plant I have a root vegetable farm. I would have a root. No, if I was out there, root vegetable farm, you know. Uh-huh. So, like, there's a lot of that going on. So. Root vegetable farm. Okay, so where would you live if it wasn't beautiful like Missoula, Montana? Where else would you go if it was I was, like, it's something like, else other than like, looks? I don't know. This would be, like, opportunity. Like, what opportunities I have and, like, what people people right. I know. I'll probably just go back to L.A. 
Yeah. Are you from LA? Originally? I'm originally from LA. You remember? We, I know you don't remember. We talked about it because you know William Taft High School. Oh, you went you to know. Taft. T A F T. Oh, now right. I remember the whole <laughs> thing. Well, no, Sink it. Yes, that's right. Yeah. So no, no, no I, I didn't go to Taft. I was supposed to go to Taft. Oh, my little my little brother went to Taft oh, High okay. School. So, so Taft I was already out in the valley, so out in the valley Woodland Hills. In Woodland no, Hills, right. so I went to Morgan City High School. In Morgan the, City. In Louisiana. The so Morgan I came City, I came out right. here my like in junior high. So Okay. And did they drink a lot of booze at Morgan City High? Because we <laughs> so I don't think I've ever met anyone that went to Morgan City High actually. So. Well hey, the first for everything. Oh baby. Yeah, I'm that. putting I'm trying to put Look Morgan City on the map. Well not really, but you know. <laughs> I, maybe I'm putting them on the map a little bit. Yeah. I don't think anyone else comes from Morgan City who's in the music scene here in New Orleans that we know about. Keith would know. Not that I can think of. I, can, I can't. So there was think somebody, of but yeah, but I, I can't think of anybody. Oh, there's yeah. there was the, wait there was a rapper even by Moby Dick. He was part of. Um, <laughs> he he went. Uh, he was part of uh, No Limit. Was he's he? Part of no, he sung hooks for like Master oh, P. But it was Moby. B didn't he? Do? I think yeah, I think yeah, it, yeah, was, it was. I want to say it was some, like some unusual. Yeah, I think so. B. Dick. Something like yeah, that. I'm going to write so. that one down. That's I, another good it's one. It's taken. You can't use that one, Grant. You can't use that I can't? as a uh, pen name or anything. No. That's the only person. Because I remember they're like, oh, yeah, he came from Morgan, Morgan City. City. Wow. That's a detail that I do not recall. So, yeah, so. That's pretty good. Did you ever meet Mo? No. Me? <laughs> I think I talked to him on MySpace a long time ago. Like MySpace. MySpace. <laughs> what happened to Mo B? I wonder. We could Google him if anyone's on that. So I should here. get him to sing a hook. Actually, check it out for us. Some of the No Limit guys are reuniting at the Essence Fest this summer. Oh, so, I mean, uh, oh, maybe really? Mo, I don't think Moby Dick is on the list. But, uh, you know, Master P, <laughs> Silk the Shocker, I think okay. Mia X maybe. Oh, maybe? Yeah, well, she Somebody. better be. She's Somebody. like the best, yeah, she's the best like one. Little, yeah, a little What's Master no P limit been reading? doing for the last six number of years? Making lots course. of money. That's what is he still <laughs> making money? Yeah, he's like selling off all his businesses. And, like, he likes, I think he started up like a... What, a, what do you call it, like a career college? Like with his son? Like I saw them doing commercials for a career college that they started up. Like he's, he's always in school. I think so. Master yeah, I seen I seen infomercials for. He it. understood the value of diversifying a long yeah, time really? ago. Yeah, well, he was just at the uh, the celebrity all star game here in New Orleans a little while back. I mean, he was hanging out and he played in the game actually. Oh really? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. He had NBA aspirations. Yeah, he played. For a he while played there. in the NBA. Mm-hmm. Well, well, he pre-season, tried out preseason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah he he yeah, played right, in like right. two preseason games for two different yeah, I teams. That. You got to try out right because he's famous. I think that helped. Yes, I, I think, think some team was trying helped. to sell yeah. some tickets. That's a yeah. great idea. He also <laughs> wrestled. People forget about he was a pro did wrestler he? for like one or two matches in WCW. He kind of did everything. Wow. That wasn't on Dancing with the Stars. I think so. I think he was. Yeah, yeah I think Romeo, the son, was supposed to be, and he got hurt or sick, and so his dad stepped in. See, like Master P, like he's just like, you know what? I want to do this. Oh, I'll do it. Yeah. It's like he, everything he wanted to do, he did. So that's kind of crazy. In the 90s, I went to his house in Beverly Hills one time because um, we were doing a big story on him. He wasn't going to be in town. So that was when, like, newspapers had more money than they knew, they knew what to do with. So they're like, oh, fly to L.A. Go talk to him out there. So we went out to his house, um, and it was a beautiful house in Beverly Hills. And, like, while we were there, he had, you know, tennis court, swimming pool, the whole bit. And guys were coming by for him to approve designs for shoes. And then that night, he was shooting a movie with uh, – what was the comedian? It was, uh, oh, gosh. I can't remember what the comedian was. Jackie name Mason. Was, was it Mike no, Epps? Jackie. No, no. It was, it was uh, another black comedian, uh, real uh, angular face, real thin face guy, um, kind of a high-pitched off. voice. No, no, no. But anyway, we were all in the trailer, and like I became like the butt of all of his jokes because I was like <laughs> the lone like little dweeby white guy right. in the trailer with all these guys and like so I was like you know and he'd be like you know so like this guy here you know and like, I mean, everybody would just fall out and laugh and I was like yeah but it made for a good story it was great yeah that is that must have been, been a fun night it was good so he, so he doesn't then he moved to Baton Rouge I believe though. That he was in Baton Rouge he yeah he was, he was in Baton Rouge early on I mean that, when I mean New Orleans originally but then was based out of Baton Rouge kind of during the heyday between Baton Rouge right. and LA I mean he had a big place in Baton Rouge and that's why he cut a lot of those records was in Baton Rouge this little bitty studio up there that was so. a great story remember he moved into some sort of enclave there or everyone's freaking out that Master P's moved well, yeah he was there in the same one as Governor, uh, Governor Edwards he was in the same subdivision uh, and like Mystical and all those guys were living in that same right. subdivision uh, that must have been funny <laughs> Yeah. That's a sitcom right there. <laughs> it was a missed opportunity. Living yeah. next door to Edwin Edwards. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. Really. exactly. So, Stacey, you got a, you're taking notes here or what's going on? I'm you got a notebook? I'm, I'm listening. You're not oh, writing in this book. Oh, I'm not. No, I don't even have my pen out. <laughs> oh. Why do you have the book in your hand? Just like a security blanket because you're nervous? It, yeah, you know, you never know. You never know what? When you might need to read put something on the spot of and then I forget everything. Have so. you written notes to come with here today? I did. Okay, so let's start off at the top of the page. <laughs> What's your first note? 
um, the, the Ogden event that we're doing this Saturday. We are uh, James event. James Michalopoulos is having an exhibit. It's um, one of the largest exposés or largest exhibits uh, retrospectives that he's doing in Louisiana um, that he's ever done. So right now he's being. So if anyone's listening to this and don't know who James Michalopoulos is, he's an artist. He as is well as a post-impressionist artist. He's probably one of the most recognizable out of Louisiana. Done some really cool jazz fest posters. He has done Pat Domino yeah. one. The, uh, He'll be John showing one, the yeah, really originals, strong. the eight foot originals at this exhibit. Oh, um, wow. Yeah, three of them. Um, you probably can't buy that for like a hundred bucks or anything. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no. I don't. So when he no. started, he he came to the. He started off. He, there was like one painting of a house that was crooked or something. <laughs> He has a yeah, he has he has like an back in the 90s or something. interesting perspective on his I mean, you wish you had bought it then yeah. because yes, you should have bought it then. <laughs> when he first I moved I told here, you. <laughs> good move. Graham, you got two. Graham the Pontiac he producer. He came to my house and signed one because he'd forgotten to sign it. He, I had a little car. He put it on in his truck, drove it to my house, helped me hang it, and then I was like, "Where's your signature?" So we went out in his truck, came back with paintbrushes, and signed in my house. So what? So why are you messing with this show? If yeah. you have kind of like what? What? Yeah, it seems like you've retired. You should have retired. So how much would that be worth? Do you think, uh, Stacy? Do you know? The style. So it was the original. Like I have two Wait, things. One is a woman, and one is a house. One's and a woman. I thought they were all houses. But. Well, no. Before, yeah. You know. He started. Um, well, when he first moved here, like thirty years ago, he started painting portraits in Jackson Square for like two or three dollars a piece. And, I mean, imagine how much those are worth now. Um, <laughs> Five or six bucks. <laughs> Double. If Triple. You're lucky. Yes. Yeah. Triple. <laughs> Triple. Triple in value. Um, and then he started selling his own art because people were really interested in what he was doing because he's got a very unique perspective. It's, they, it's a skewed. Uh, they call it, like, rock and roll art. Um, and so he just started selling his own pieces. And, and So you don't know anything Square. about art necessarily. You're in the booze that- End of the, yeah, so, of the Michelopolis <laughs> Empire. As he got more successful, he started traveling, and he um, spent some time in France. And when he was there, his friends were making wine, and he was like, well, I want to do that. But he came back and realized you can't grow grapes in Louisiana. Um, but we have something amazing, plant-based, sugarcane. <laughs> uh-huh. And that's the rule of the rum, is it needs okay. to be a byproduct of sugarcane. So he started okay. a rum distillery. So did we dispense with the Ogden... Event. Well, the Ogden event we is... We need to finish the thought. Oh, yeah. The Ogden we, event, it is, it is the this Saturday. Um, <laughs> this Saturday, eight, meaning this Saturday. if you're listening to this after, what date is that exactly? It's the 11th, so it's after the 10th. Saturday, the 11th of <laughs> March, 2017. Mm-hmm. People listen to these shows all up and down Right, they can be listening to this for years. Yeah, right. And so exactly. if you listen to this after... The 11th of March, 2017. It's too late. You've missed it. No, if you if you don't if you don't make it on Saturday, you oh. have all the way until Bastille Day, July 16th, to see the art hanging. I think Bastille Day is July 14th, though. Well, it'll be hanging until the 16th. Whatever. So. Maybe they've <laughs> changed it. Maybe. The French, you know, you can't rely on them, right? They just moved it. Yeah, they're not punctual. I mean, come on. Well, French. I could be wrong. That could be the 16th. I mean, we're not punctual. <laughs> punctual exactly. people. And so the French heritage, yes. <laughs> so it's up till July, the f- whatever it is, 16th, 16th 2017, yeah. you can go to the Ogden Museum on Camp Street and see it, the M- Michelopolis retrospective. Yes, it's called Waltzing the Muse. Walting. Waltzing. Waltzing. Like waltzing, waltzing Matilda. Like Waltzing well, Matilda. Yes, if you'd yes. said that, I would have got it. Okay. So... <laughs> So how did you get involved with... So he went to France and decided while he was in France for some reason that he would make rum when he came back home. He came back and he and, you know, was like, all right, what can we do? And um, so in 19... He had too much money from painting, selling these paintings. He was really successful. And well, there's nothing wrong with that. He's a, he's a businessman and an inventor. And What's he invented? He has... Um, I mean, well, one of the things that we do at the distillery is we built our own pot stills and our in our own fermentation tanks, so he's helped with that. He's mm. also a sculptor, so he's very hands-on with everything. Um, but when he decided to open the distillery, it was in 1995, and um, he discovered at that time that he was the only operating rum distillery in the United States. Um, and up yeah. until, yeah. Wait, so we get, now the oldest one in the United States? We are the oldest operating, wow. continuously operating, until Since 2012. 2012 was when the next rum distillery opened. So. so nobody was making rum in the United States before 1995. That's where's, almost where's it. Where's it all we, made? Yeah. yeah. In the Caribbean. All of it? Yeah, that makes, um, that makes like sense. Like 80% yeah. of the world's rum, I think, comes out of Puerto Rico. Huh. So, yeah. Well, why are they so poor? 
If they're I mean, selling 80% of the world's rum. Because they're rebuilding their houses every summer. But look how much rum. I think rum. maybe one family is really well. Look how much yeah, rum. Yeah, yeah, it's it's like Mr. Collection like like of fun. Mr. Bacardi yeah. is doing really well uh, He's in Puerto Rico. Yes, or wherever. Uh, yes, so how wherever. much are these bottles of booze here? This is a white crystal rum. So this, this one is, is our, yeah, this crystal is actually our 121. We just released it um, to the market, so it's our overproofed rum. Overproof. Yep. Um, can we drink some of it or what? Yeah, we can drink some of it. Vince, you want to try some rum? See if Vince wants a shot. He's a so the overproof Keith, you want to try really it? Oh. Keith's in charge of trying this. We've got shot glasses here, <laughs> thanks to the people at Wayfair. Yeah, right. If you guys are going to volunteer to come watch my kids tonight and finish yes, writing we my are. stories. There's you know only what? You three. Should, somebody with you kids should probably try this one. Okay. Why is this that? one you is guys, our King Creole. Nathan, you want to try one? Or Asher or Grayson, you want a shot of rum? This is our award-winning yeah. rum. You, this King Creole. Which award did it win? King um, Creole. Is it we called We won the Platinum Award in the, in the tastings, Jeez. international tastings, uh, blind rum competition. It's for blind people. I don't know where they found all the blind judges. No, but, that's yeah. cool. Well, that's um, good that everybody gets an equal shot. Were they blind after they drank the rum? They Was were not. Happened? No, yes. no. Yeah. We have a really good filtration system on our rum. Can we so say blind? I mean, isn't every it contest... It's a blind tasting. But isn't every tasting blind, for goodness sakes? Like, Otherwise, no. you what? You know what you're tasting right now, so it's not a blind taste. No, but we're not. <laughs> we're not awarding prizes, though. How does that taste, Keith? Uh, I, I mean, not a rum connoisseur, but well, it seems you will very be by the time smooth. you knock is off a right few word? of these. It yeah. is, yeah. I think smooth is a good word. I think it's smooth. Does anyone else want to taste it? Y- yeah. Yeah. Mm. Which so one should I taste? Good. I, this one or that one? The white one or the dark one? The award-winning one? The blind the award-winning one? Award-winning one, yeah. Just give me a little tiny shot, though. So it's I have a, to got a long way to go here. So it's a okay. blend of 8 right. to 17-year-old rums. 8 to 17? Mm-hmm. What's the median? Um, it's 11? Th- what's the one? 8 to 17. That's eight a funny sort of number, isn't it? Well, it's all a surviving Katrina Nathan, rum. Help yourself. Um, what oh. didn't... Allison, you want some? Okay, we have to try this. I'll take, I'll take a little... <laughs> <laughs> So the oldest vintage oh, dates back nice. to 1998. Mm-hmm. I don't even. Wow. That is very smooth. This reminds me of. Uh, and they're aged in American oak bourbon heroin. barrels. Heroin. <laughs> <laughs> Does it? They're aged in oak barrels. And, and bur- we reuse bourbon barrels. Um, so, ah. you know, the only rule to rum is it needs to be a byproduct of sugar cane. Uh, we use a premium cut of molasses that we get from the LeFou Sugar Mill down in Homa. It's a B cut molasses. B uh, cut. It's B cut. So it's the first cut I of molasses. Write that one down as well. B and cut if you come molasses. to the distillery and do a tour, you can taste the molasses that we make it from, the raw product. Do you sell that? We do not sell it. That would be a good idea. What does B cut molasses mean? Oh, look, Graham's oh, got a flask, flask here, which features in most of our shows. <laughs> hey, you busted up your hand drinking, yeah, I see. No, my dog. I your dog? Mm, you got so pulled over by your dog? You want to tell the story on no, the microphone? So, so he just pulled you no. out. <laughs> Doesn't want to. <laughs> One more of these, and you. Hey, that's really good. Okay, so what's bee cut molasses? So when they're producing the sugar, they um, they'll cut the sugar cane down, and you get a juice when they press it, and then they'll heat it up and, and cook it in a way that causes crystallization, and they'll separate that through a centrifuge, and you get raw sugar, and you get a, a, a sugar syrup, like caro syrup, it's like a like clear a, syrup, like a science class. It is science. Yeah. Like a, a, a lot of magic in there class, too. A science class, yeah. it's like it's it's Mike Kelly, our head distiller, is, off, is like our, a magician that he takes all this science and then makes this beautiful tasting product. Um, so after you have this caro syrup, the sugar mill wants to make more product, so they'll do the same process again, and you get a light brown sugar, but it cooks it cooks it more. So then your syrup then turns into this nice dark rich product that's called a molasses, and the first cut is a B cut. Are you following this somehow? Why wouldn't it be an A cut? <laughs> the A cut would be the not syrup. Really. Okay. No. I'm so a little bit first, lost as well. When you first when you first cook it down, you get something clear. And that's okay. Your syrup. That's your so a. so you give this lecture at the uh, at and the distillery. Yeah, when people come on, come on tour, tours. Are you the well, tour guide? I used to do tours. I don't. I, I so now have. I now have very talented staff of tour. Of so tour you're guides. moved on up the ladder here at I, the yeah. distillery. <laughs> so what's your title? You're the. Uh, I'm the tasting room manager, and I also. Um, run our cocktail program. What a great So gig. we create a lot of cocktails. <laughs> you run the cocktail it's program really at a hard. distillery. That's <laughs> almost like the opening line of a joke, isn't it? Probably. You know what I mean? That's like an Australian joke of some sort. 
are Australians bad at telling jokes? No. 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 <laughs> no what are you like, saying you know, about Grant? What are you, you saying? Know, I'm from New Zealand, New Zealand, so yeah. I'm off it. I'm, I'm, I'm safe. Kiwi, Kiwi. How did you get a job like that? Yeah, I'm a Kiwi. How did you get a job? You know, I went through, you know, in college, bartending, started off. You didn't go to college for bartending. I did not go to college for bartending. Where did you go to college? I went to UNO. Yeah, well, that'll do it right there. We did a lot of research in bars. <laughs> did do a lot of research in bars. Yep. I also paid all of my bills by working in bars. Um, Not stripping. No. Mostly people no, say I, I paid yeah. off my bills stripping. Do I don't they? think I'd make mm-hmm. as much money as other girls. So. You can make as much money bartending I don't, as stripping. I, I would probably make more money as a bartender than stripping. Yeah. <laughs> you got to have you, confidence in yourself. Come on. I'm yeah. really, Come on. So hard I'm on really confident in a masculine vest and with a cocktail shaker. Oh, okay. There we go. <laughs> there we go. A masculine vest. I've always mm-hmm. worked in like five-star hotels and restaurants, and they make you wear these atrocious vests. So right. I don't know. I guess it makes you look like a, a professional bartender. Well, I guess it can look yeah, kind of sexy. Or, or you're playing snooker, you know, or snooker. 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 Yes. There you go. Billiards. 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 Very sophisticated. <laughs> yes. Well, how did you think of that? Where did that come from? Oh, well, I was thinking of, like, the, how they dress. Oh, the sophisticated. Oh, the, yeah. That's right. right they're right. dressed like they are bartenders. Right. Right. That's true. So, I, uh, yeah. I, um, where did you work? What bars would people know you from here? So, the first bar I ever worked at where I started learning bartending was at the Sazerac. And that was pre-Katrina. <laughs> right. Um, and then I went to the Swizzle Stick. I took a hiatus and worked in in uh, the field that I studied for a little while. And then... Um, what was that? Don't even... I even studied mention. sociology, so I worked in uh, mental health for a little bit. So bartending is very mm-hmm. similar. Same animal, different I cage. No sociology <laughs> and mental health. Well, yeah. Oh, I'd sure. say you'd have a better, bigger effect on mental health as a bartender. Than, Defin- I than definitely make more money Did as you work a in a, like, an insane asylum or anything? No. We worked for a not-for-profit agency um, that helped kids before they got removed from their home. So. Oh, dear. Hmm. It was a very stressful job. dismal. So yes. I went back to bartending. Good idea. Yeah. Oh, that must have been very Same depressing. skills. Sta- same skill set. Other than I'm now just handing drinks. But did you feel like uh, when you were working with kids that you were doing something useful and now you're just completely wasting your life making cocktails? No. I don't feel like I'm wasting my life at all. What do you think you're making, contributing to the world making cocktails? People I, need I'm cocktails. Helping the, I mean, no, people that's need true. cocktails. That's true. I mean, Escapism. You I have a two-year-old. You've got three kids. We need drinks sometimes. <laughs> yeah, you know? right. absolutely. So. I would think that working with you know, disadvantaged children and helping them get a life that would be so worthwhile compared to just there's a lot of burnout sort of drug in it. Deal. yeah it's, it can get depressing so you know yeah how long did you do it for um almost 10 years 10 oh yeah you did oh, your time God. yeah, that's yeah a you long did your time sure. you did your time oh i thought you were there for like a year or something. no 10 years no, I'm, oh. I'm, I, I'm older than i look <laughs> you must be <laughs> that's well, good though right we're not gonna I'm, ask how hopefully yeah don't don't ask that's what we're gonna i'm 25 that was nice very sweet what did you say he said 25. 25. Okay. Well, you could be because you have a two-year-old, so you could have had that when you yeah. were 23. Who's the dad of this kid? One of the drummers? No. He's <laughs> the, he's a chef. Aha. Uh-huh. Good thinking. Almost a drummer. <laughs> <laughs> Where is he sh- a chef at? He's a saute chef over at Cafe Adelaide. So. Ah, that's a good spot, Cafe yeah. Adelaide. Isn't that where the swizzle <laughs> stick bar I worked at the swizzle stick. Is that stick. how you met? Yeah. Yes. Oh, how romantic. Yeah. What, was, yeah. what was the meeting? That's the age-old story. Isn't yes. it? Yeah. I was a bartender at the Swizzle Stick. Yeah. And we all, we all went for late-night drinks after work. And, ah. yeah. and, and what happened? We ended up having a kid a year later. Wow. So you, <laughs> See, when, did you end up having sex with him that night? Do we need to sketch this out? No, yeah, I'm not trying that to night. Figure like, out. Let me, let you me get your pad out. Everyone's got a notebook. Amal, you don't have a notebook here. I've got no, a no, no, no. He has his laptop, though. I do no, have that's a laptop. True. Which, is, we, which is we have to get on to right now. Oh, okay. We have to listen to some music. Oh, yeah. You have to hear what Amal's up to. Yeah, Keith, I guess. especially you. And then we're going to talk about the writing about music. Yeah, yeah. are you writing are you about Buku Fest? Uh, Buku Arts and Music Project? I did project? preview it, and I'll be going, yeah. yeah cool. So day. you didn't mention me? Uh, I think I did mention you somewhere in there okay. in the list, maybe, hopefully. Did you send him a check? Did you send him a check? You know, the PR it's company was supposed to take care of that. Right. <laughs> oh, that's why Emily Rimsnyder is working with you, because you you're at Buku. I am. Oh, I thought you must be successful enough to hire a PR company. Now, now I see the whole thing. No, okay. I'm not. Th- I'm getting, I'm close enough. Ah, okay. You know, but oh, usually. I thought you were doing really well. Then you walk in here looking like a million bucks. I'm like, wow. <laughs> Miles really got it going on. He's got a PR person and he looks great. He's on a plant-based <laughs> diet. In the intro, he was the guy in the limousine that rolled up. Yeah, right? yeah exactly. When you, the Whether you get out of a limousine yes, or exactly. just get out of jail. Right, right, right. right, right. limo. 
those things. Oh, it's it's definitely out of the limo. I do like these things too. These are beautiful looking jewelry items. Oh, well, thank you. Anyway, so you don't have a real PR person of your own. That's just well, of no. I, well, actually, I did do PR. I did have a PR person before when I put out my first record, right. and then I was like, "You just took all my money. This sucks." <laughs> So I'm just doing it myself, and I was more <laughs> successful. I mean, he got me some cool placements, but there's a lot of things I did on my own and yeah. I made my own connections. But so. that's the same with But I'm at the point now where I'm like, okay, I need to hire a PR firm. So you do? Yeah. What's going sure. on? What are you? What's what's the what's happening with you? Oh uh, well, like today I'm playing. Uh, there's this there's this um, this web based series called Boiler Room where they they take these different DJs and different bands and artists and they play like uh, yeah, last night Christian Scott played with his uh, quartet um, I think the night before they had Big Frida and now I'm going to be playing with wow you, so with, you're in the A list yeah yeah I'm wow. part of that and I'm doing that tonight and then I got Buku Fest and Saturday and I'm also playing an official after party Friday opening up for Grizz. So I'm at the Joy Theater. So okay. it's going to be it's gonna be pretty okay, cool. Okay, so things are working out. Yeah. They're definitely working yeah, out. Yeah, you've you gone know. a long, long way from Red Bull uh, when you were the Red Bull spokesman. I still, still I still doing am. That? I'm still doing the Red Bull stuff. So. Okay. Music well, let's academy. take a listen to what you're playing these days. Oh, yeah. So, so tell us something about it, and then we'll take a listen. Yeah, so my manager was like, hey, you need to drop some music because Buku Fest is coming up. I'm like, oh, okay. So, all right, I'll put together an EP. So I have a lot of back catalog of music. So I was like, all right, well, let me package this EP together and... So I put out, released a single. It's called Don't Forget My Energy. And it's just an instrumental. Uh, the other tracks on the EP, they all have vocals on it. But this is the only instrumental. Why so did you choose to play the only oh, instrumental I, on this show? Uh, because, you know, there's a lot of cursing in the other songs. So. Oh, God, we wouldn't. Well, it's not that. a problem, apparently. apparently you, can can you can curse all you want here. Oh, okay. Do you want to change your mind and play? Yeah, all right. I'll, I'll just do the. I'll do the. I'm going to play a cursing one? Or? Yeah, I'll just play with all the curse words, yeah. Okay, well, <laughs> which one would you like to play, regardless uh, of the FCC, which we don't have to worry about? Oh, okay. Well, I'll just play uh, Honey Vinegar featuring Darby Capital. Honey Vinegar. There we go. So, do we know how to get a hold of that? Oh, uh, you can go. You can go. No, oh, okay. What? Okay, you have to go over there and do that. Okay. Well, hey, while he's doing that, I could tell you guys about these people here, which I had to mention anyway. And I <laughs> do totally it. Have. So thank you very much to these people who made today's show possible. Whoa. Nope, you weren't fast enough. Stick around for some endorsements in just a <laughs> <laughs> This is Honey Vinegar by AF and ASAP. It's the wrong song. Okay, we can put the right song on if you want. Yes. And now we can do his endorsement. We'll have to. Now I can read these things over. Thanks very much to Hangover Destroyer, the only all-natural product medically proven to prevent a hangover. Go to the Hangover Destroyer website. It's hdestroyer.com. We should have taken them. Well, do you get a hangover a lot, Stacey? I do after I turn 30. Oh, oh really? Yeah. Hmm. Well, you need Hangover Destroyer. If you go well, to the Hangover Destroyer website, it's hdestroyer.com. Gotcha. And you write happy hour in the coupon code. You'll get 30% off of your order of Hangover Destroyer. I love a good and deal. And you, too, will be able to seize the dawn. How about it? <laughs> seize, the seize, the seize the dawn. Seize the dawn is the slogan of Hangover Destroyer. Pretty good, isn't it? Absolutely. Don't you think? It's got uh, a sort of Japanese ring to it. Absolutely. I don't know why I think that. Also, thanks to Basics Swim and Gym, we can get a full range of fashion swimsuits, workout, and yoga clothes with style. This is for you, Amal. You do yoga, don't you? I, I can hear it. You do yoga? Oh, yeah, actually do. You do. So you could get some yoga clothes at Basics Swim and Gym, where you can also get a bikini, a one-piece, a cover-up, and everything you need for the beach, and poolside at Basics Swim and Gym on Magazine Street, right next to Basics, underneath the lingerie store, Ooh. where Keith buys most of the stuff that he's wearing today. <laughs> Correct? Okay, so you have X-ray vision? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Did we get the right song on, Amal? What's I, up? I have it, so yeah. I'm okay. So I'll, now, I'll when we do it. the introduction again, Stacy, can you introduce this? It's Honey and Vinegar. From AF the Naysay office, new EP now available wherever good music is stolen. Where, Can you say that? <laughs> wherever good music this is, is stolen. This is Honey and Vinegar by AF the Naysayer. Now available wherever music is stolen. Perfect, thank you. <laughs> Okay, now what's going on? This is very unprofessional. Oh, no, we're on another song. So that, it sounded like the same song that was on. Oh, that was. So this is the right song. Okay, Stacey, can you introduce it now? This is the right song. 
This is Honey and Vinegar by AF the Naysayer, now available anywhere music is stolen. It. That's what we get to hear. I loved it. Okay, <laughs> nice. That's the whole song. Yeah. Okay, that seems short as hell to me. Oh, you know, I thought it was punk gonna... rock style, baby. Yeah. Nice. So it was like like two and a half minutes or something. Mm-hmm. That's old fashioned song. So did you do all the tracks too? I mean, did you, you brought them out. Yeah, oh, yeah, I did. That's all. That's all me. Uh, yeah. So. And so, what's that one? What's it about? What's the the gist of that one? Uh, well, my friend Darby just freestyled over the track, so it started off. You attract like an homage to one of my favorite producers named Jan Yelnik is a German producer. Um, there's like a lot of experimental house kind of music. And then I was like, oh, this would be pretty cool if I slowed it down and had somebody rap on it. My friend Darby was like, yeah, okay. And yeah, he's out of Baton Rouge. So oh, do you rap on. at all? Or? <laughs> not at all. I'm not, not at a all? rapper. No, no. Not at all. Do you do vocals? No. You don't sing or anything? No, I just tell other people how to sing. <laughs> well, I would totally play that to get us started our day at the distillery. <laughs> so Keith how would you write about that how would you go about putting that into words or describing what that was I'd write exactly what he just said yeah, where he talked about the musical influences of it right. and he said you know I gave direction to this guy to freestyle and let him do it and then talk a little bit about what but, he's freestyling about but, but yeah, do but, you but have to have an opinion yourself would you have to say this is good or this sucks or something no not necessarily I mean it, it depends on what kind of thing I was, I was doing if I was doing a review of it then I would have an opinion but if I was just Talking about what exists, you know, here's, here's there, the press release, you know, right. paraphrase, right? I mean, you know, you try to get a little more interesting than that. I but, hope. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, what's your yeah, role? Yeah. Are you the gatekeeper? Are you the person who like tells people what's going on? I mean, there's all this music out there. Do you listen to tons of stuff and only write about a little bit of it? Nah, I mean, yeah. I mean, there's a river going by, and you pluck certain things out as that river's right. running by. But I mean, yeah, I, 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 the role of Critics, I don't even call myself a critic. I'm more of a writer. I mean, you're not a gatekeeper as much as you used to be because there's so many other ways to discover right. music. I mean, you go on YouTube and hear, you know, anything that was ever recorded pretty much. You know? Yeah, so but it's hard to find it. Yeah, I mean, so I try to give direction to things that people should find. And I also like to say I write about musicians more than I write about music. I end up writing about people and why they do what they do and how and what's interesting about them. I think, so I trying think, to describe the music. I think that's more important, you know. Yeah, because everybody can go hear the music themselves. I mean, you can make your own opinion, have your own right. opinion about the music. You know, but I'll go to a show and talk about you know, what worked and what didn't and all that well, sort of what stuff. What do you so. think about that? I read a lot of your criticism. I mean, the, you know, the music reviews. Mm-hmm. 
What what is the function? I always sometimes wonder about that because I I read those and I think, God damn it! I wish I was there. Well, I yeah. missed a great show. That's just, good. That's good if you have that reaction. Me off. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's good if you Not have that reaction. Off at you it personally, but <laughs> you know, like, well, nowadays you can just like look it up, like Facebook live stream or you know someone's story yeah, on you're Instagram. Reading it the next morning though. No no, the no, 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 it's like while it's going on, a lot of people, they, I'd rather right. just watch a show, but you know, a lot of people, they stream like the, yeah. they'll stream a show like, oh, I'm at this concert, it's so great. Yeah, oh, which is, yeah. A, I mean, people are doing that, it's just crazy, because like, you're missing the experience exactly. of being there, and you know, seeing the live stream is not as cool as actually no, being there. No, not at all. But, but you know, and I like, I mean, I do have, uh, sometimes it was making me mad when I'd go and performers would say, you know, put away your phones, but I get it, because it's distracting, and it's silly that everyone's like trying to videotape it but it really you can tell the the age average of a crowd by how many of the people in that crowd or have their phones out the whole time you know like 21 pilots the other night right young crowd everyone's got their phones out you know the eagles not so much you know because uh, <laughs> the eagles actually specifically said nobody have your phones put them all away so but you know the younger generation of folks definitely like to share that experience with everyone else rather you, than actually have the experience do you remember that guy reckless eric he was a era. singer. He was a singer like in the punk era. Did he open for the Bullet Boys? I don't think so. <laughs> he was a punk singer that was around at the same time as the Clash. He had a song called "The Whole Wide World." I'd go to the whole wide world just to find you. I, so we saw him. We did. I, I was talking to him somewhere in a bar or something. And he said he still does this. He goes a solo tour now with a, just him and a guitar. Mm-hmm. And he does this. His hit, you know, the big hit song, "The Whole Wide World." Mm-hmm. He said, "I call it the cell phone song." As soon as I say I'm going to play that, everyone takes their cell phones out yep. and holds them up. Yep. And you go to some shows where everybody's got a phone. Yes. And it's or you can use like the lighter, like, oh. Right. Sure. So I might yeah, used to go to BlackBerry. Yeah, because I'm, uh, you know. Old I'm, school. I'm old school at heart. I just don't want, this phone still works. Why change it? Yeah, well, that's true. Mine stopped working. I, I love the BlackBerry. I'm not big I on loved my BlackBerry. Everybody yeah. loved it. Weren't they yeah. great? Yeah. You could they, type on it. Well, I mean, they, they, they Especially made... Especially when they, they got that side toggle. It was so amazing. Yeah. They, uh, they, toggle. They, made, they made an updated version. It's called the Passport. Um, and it's supposed to rival the iPhone 6. It came out in 2015. Uh, so, you know, look it up. But you don't, you don't have it. <laughs> I do you not. You still got your old Because this one still works. I drop it. It doesn't crack. Yeah. It still works. I, I put a Has phone it got that in? little trackball thing on it? Uh, no, this is like a bootleg. <laughs> So this is like the Nokia <laughs> version. So okay. it doesn't have that. Well, that's coming back. <laughs> so, like, you see how old it is. There's no, you can't even see the letters on it. Is so. it a color wow. screen? Yeah, it's color. Come on. But it's man. not touch screen. I don't know. Come on. It's a Blackberry. It's a Blackberry, you know? Like, I'm not playing Snake that on something. here, you know? But that's not a touch screen. have a big screen. antenna on it's it. Got a little, it's, like a, it's got a little I mean, mouse. there's internet on it if I want it. I just took it off because I don't want to be on the internet. I don't want to have access to the internet. All the time, I think it's dangerous. You know, no, it's very dangerous. So. Like you just be like what, me what and you let your phone die all the time. <laughs> what is more like is just like because you, you know I mean, sometimes people are just addicted to social media and whatnot. I just want to regulate like what I'm constantly the information I'm constantly getting all the time. That's the so danger. I'm, you think you get too much information? Uh, it depends on well, it depends on what you? information you're getting. You know, like it's you so one of the reasons why I subscribe to New York Times is because like. I pay for that because I'm wanting to get credible information. Like a mm-hmm. lot of times on social media, people are posting up uh, like non credible sites. Yeah, that's what we were talking about earlier. Same thing. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, I, yeah, I want to yeah, regulate exactly. what information I get. Like at least, like, you know, it's all secondhand information. Why are you but so rather, interested in the truth? Oh. Uh, <laughs> Didn't Duran Duran have a song called Too Much Information? Too Much Information. Yeah, exactly. so he, I, I guess, mean, I guess ignorance, the truth that important? ignorance is bliss, and maybe I like being, uh, you know, depressed. <laughs> you don't like being depressed, <laughs> right? I'm sure. But I don't see what's so big good about the truth, really. What, what does it matter if it's all false? Well, I mean, it, as a you know? music creator, I think you're kind of reflecting your times that you're experiencing. And so it's important for you to have a truth to the time that you're living in. I would say that's true. That's a good one. That's like, my, this is okay. my new publicist. Yeah, there you, there you go. Connection is made right job. here on the show. <laughs> I'd like to know who does your hair. Your hair looks awesome. My roommate does it. Oh. Yeah. You have a roommate? I do. A hairdresser? No. No, we just. She just does your hair, or he? Who is she? It? Yeah, Brittany. And the Brittany highlights Johnson. match your shirt. 
That on purpose. I just, and the shirt I matches the notebook. Wow. It does. Check I'm, out the I'm notebook. moving from purple. I'm going to be blue after tonight. So oh, tonight. noticed a lot of people are doing purple now. So I got to move on. I got to move on. I wouldn't call yeah. Is that purple? I wouldn't call that no, purple. No, it's phase. It's, it was fading out. So now it's got this weird blue green mermaid. Oh, I it's purple on the end. It's got purple. Yeah. Is it? Oh, uh, yeah. I wouldn't touch that. I would leave that exactly as it is for Buku Fest. Are you going to Buku? I'm not. I'm going to be at the art opening. That's on Jobs. Saturday night, yeah. the March the 11th. Mar- uh, March the 11th, Saturday night oh, right. at the Ogden. Do you have another, any more notes in that book? I see you've closed the book now, I so did. you've given up. No, I've not <laughs> given up. I just remembered everything. I'm very comfortable now. If you've got them all in. I've got, got six all... more minutes and I'm good to go. Okay. You know? Have you got everything in? So we've got, now we haven't tried the ginger. We haven't tried ginger. I know you had, you endorsed a hangover cure, but this is yeah. my hangover cure. Are you serious? It is. It's, you know, ginger roots are one of our best selling, most popular products. Um, we, okay. t- we get ginger root in and we press it in house and we do a cayenne Where infusion on our rum. Cayenne infusion. Where does the ginger come from? The gi- well, James, the owner, is a huge fan of ginger tea. And so we, we did a drink to. That he would love. So this James is kind of like the master P of, of booze and art. He can just, That's whatever he feels like doing, he just does right. it, and it turns out to be a success. <laughs> does he have a signature shoe yet? That Not yet. That make him, yeah. We could work on it. Maybe we can make a ginger shoe. He should probably start a career college. Ah, a career college, thinking. exactly. Michaelopolis exactly. College. There you go. It's a hard name to spell. It, it is. Isn't it? <laughs> it's I, I, yeah. not like Harvard, which is easy. I guess it depends on so, where you're from, right? You know? Well, if you're from Greece, maybe. Yeah, would, pretty, pretty simple. You would probably have no problem with it. Yeah, you're right about that. It would probably be easier if we were all from Greece. Yeah. yeah. Well, except we would be uh, have no money at all. Yeah, I heard. I think yeah, Greece has yeah, someone told me yeah, recently, yeah, someone recently oh. told me they were going to go visit Greece, and then they're like, I don't want the currency to fail on me while I'm out there, and I'm out there <laughs> barter with iPads. So I was like, oh, that makes sense. I think it would be a great time to go to Greece. You could probably buy like the Parthenon or something right now, probably, (laughs) for like a couple thousand bucks. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. Who knows, yeah. Hey, Keith, how old are your kids? They are nine, six, and uh, five. We're nine, seven, and five. They just just had a birthday. Okay. Nine, seven, and five. Does it get easier? (laughs) Yeah, what's two? Can you remember two? I laugh at you. Um, <laughs> it's easier once out of diapers. That which that was a great. Um, is yours out of diapers yet? We are tackling that as we speak. Yeah. Uh-huh. That's a whole new world. I mean, and it's like giving yourself a thousand dollar a year raise. Like nice. when you're out of the diapers. Oh, I can't wait to stop it's buying diapers. Awesome, awesome. But um, it just gets very complicated. Two of them were in tears this morning, uh, getting ready for school. One because she lost a balloon, a helium balloon, and the other one because I didn't let him put his. Pirate's booty puffs in the bag himself because we were late, and I shoved him in. And so, two kids breaking down. Ah, have a meltdown over the pirate's booty and the helium weekday. balloon. Yep, just a regular weekday. So, that's interesting. You haven't got to that stage. You just have this one. Oh, child. are you having he, any more? Um, probably, I kind of have my moments of baby fever, and then, um, and then he'll have a meltdown because I, you know, gave him an orange instead of an apple, and then I'm like, yeah, no. <laughs> no more. <laughs> no more. Yeah, you need to take some Tylenol when you that baby fever hits, man. Also break that, kind get of that need down. Break it down, yeah. <laughs> you can't do the baby thing on your own, so, you know. You're on, are you on your own? Yes. We, we addressed just that earlier, mm-hmm. remember? Yes. I mean, yeah, so you're just, the, just Brittany, the roommate, but the chef boyfriend does not, you don't live together. No. Yeah. Okay. When's that yeah. going to change? Is that changing? No, we're well, not. She said she was single. You're not together. She's, no. Remember, she's single. Oh, she's that's like, right. Like, you're like, single like, occasionally. Like, occasionally. It's like single, oh, but yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. the whole drummer thing fun. we went through. Yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that, was, that seems like another day, but, you know, two or three days ago. <laughs> that was the same show. Barely an hour. Same ago. conversation. Yeah. 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 I may just stop drinking this. What am I drinking? What is this again? That this is the our 20th anniversary blend, the King Creole. King Creole. Now, who owns that name? Because there was a movie called King Creole with Elvis Presley in it. Yeah. So who owns? Shout out at the lakefront. I think. Wasn't it? Was it? Yeah, it was at the newer, yeah, they shot some out here. It yeah. starts <laughs> off in the French Quarter with the uh, with the rag and bone man or the <laughs> Mr. Okra or something going by. Remember? I think it was Mr. Okra. Mr. But. Okra of the whatever year that was, 1950. So who owns the words King Creole? Can you... I think it depends on how it's used. Um, yeah, I mean, on, on just because it was a song used, style, yeah. I mean, it, yeah. that only was like a Oh, really? That um, would not be a copyright like, infringement? I don't think King so. Creole no, 20th anniversary blend, so maybe because it's right. got like a subtitle on it. And I don't Not know. Really I'm sure. sure it's fine. Okay, so let's try some ginger root. Yeah. Or should we open that? What the hell? Do you it's have to open. shake that? No, you don't. No, it's um, it does have we, it has oh. effervescence. <gasps> wow, that sounds good. Oh, I know, and it's so good. We we do a forced carbonation on it, and then we bottle it chilled, so like champagne. 
It can go to room temperature to store, and then the mm-hmm. effervescent stays nice and fine. And how are you supposed to drink it over you ice? You can drink it by itself. Up? You can drink it over ice. You can use it as a mixer. I like making a mojito instead of club soda, putting ginger ale in it just to give it a kick. So do you sit around dreaming up because you make up cocktails? You create cocktails. I do. So how do you do that? Do you start off with the ginger ale and think what would go with that? Like bacon? Um, sometimes, okay. sometimes I just think about, I like you to, use, we like to, I mean, we're local. Um, we use local ingredients. So I always like to look at what's oh, in season and what's local good. and, um, you know, do different things from that. You know, we're going to be at Paradigm Gardens for the next um, two months doing their pizza and pie night every other Wednesday. So for t- pizza, like we're doing did you say pizza and pie here, Keith, pizza and pie. Yeah, we're getting. What do you mean pizza and pie? So they're do they Isn't have a pizza a pie. They have a wood um, a, yeah, a brick a oven pie. in their garden, and they're going to be doing some pizzas and some scratch pies, and we're going to be serving up some drinks tonight. We're doing the a red plum and ginger cocktail with our overproofed rum. So we're going to have different Man, different know. cocktails. Out that's there the, with fresh ingredients. That stuff is awesome, that ginger. I've it never is had that delicious, up. yeah. Did you try that? If you like ginger. I do. Do you like ginger? I was more of a Marianne guy, actually. da 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 Thank you very much. We're yeah. here every week. That is a, that is a good drink. Mm-hmm. And very it will nice. cure any, any, Graham, any wrong doing. Come on, have a shot of ginger. I think you'll see. Allison's not drinking anything over there. Do you want I'm some ginger? Oh, you, Allison already knows what all about that. We're just going to give her the bottle. Her friend okay. loves it. Oh, her friend it, likes so. it. Yeah, that's right. Okay. And we just started distributing in, distributing in uh, Lafayette. So yeah, Allison's from lives. Lafayette originally. Okay, so listen, we have to get out of here in like a, one second. So what have we forgotten to mention? Anything? Uh, Keith, did you want to bring anything up before we leave here? I'm good, man. Read You're good the newspaper, go. Legitimate News. Read I'm Legitimate News, yep. The Advocate. You can there find you Keith go. Spear as Read newspapers. in The Advocate. Yes. You can find Amal at the Buku Fest, A.F. the Naysayer is That's his true. stage name. Well, Buku Arts and Music Project. Project. Okay. Yeah, there we go. And when are you playing, if somebody would like to go I'm and meet you? I'm playing Saturday at the Back Alley at 6.15. Back Alley on Saturday, and that's the same, so you could have and still And I'm also time. playing Friday at the Joy Theater at midnight. Oh, well, that's cool. So go. how can we find you? We'll put a link to your stuff on oh. our website, but you have, like, in case of someone... Yeah, this is my website, afnaysayer.com. Uh, you can follow my social media, facebook.com slash afnaysayer, Instagram, afnaysayer, Twitter, afnaysayer. Oh, afnaysayer, so... Afnaysayer is everywhere. Afnaysayer. You can't go wrong. And, Stacey, we can find you down at the... Where is this joint? This We are in Gentilly. It's 2815 Frenchman Street. We also have a free shuttle that will pick you up from the French market if you don't want to drive. All right. That's yeah. a good idea. You have a free Come shuttle. Come do a tour. You can go to the website, oldneworleansrum.com. Sign up there. Okay. Very good. I think that about covers the whole thing. It's been great. You guys, thank you so much for joining me. That's been a happy hour for another entire week. Awesome. What do you think? Thanks, Grant, for having yeah. me. Thanks You're for welcome. Having me. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. Let me tell you about uh, who put our show together. The producer of our show is Graham DePonte. He's the person over here with the hip flask. It's actually not a hip <laughs> flask. What is that thing? It's more of a sort of a... What do you call hey, it's that? It's a flask you can buy in the distillery. It's a hip flask. It's really we'll it's fill it for you if you buy one. Oh, really? So if you go to the distillery and get a hip flask, it'll come filled with booze. We will fill it with it's your choice of rum. You get one of this like fancy 180 proof, 120 proof, whatever it is, rum in my hip flask. Sure. Anything but the King Creole. Yep. Wow, that sounds good. Okay. Our music director is Christian Unruh, and our music producer is Jean Valois. <laughs> Thomas Walsh is our technical director, and today's show is engineered by Nathan Place. Our live feed directors are Asher Griffith. And Grayson Jernigan, thank you guys. Our theme music was written by and is currently being played by Mitch Foreman. If you'd like to be on our show and you can stay upright for about an hour while drinking alcohol, drop us a line. Our address is on our website, it's neworleans.com. We can also check out some other shows we make here. There's many more hours of happy hours I listen to, as well as some shows like Out to Lunch with Peter Raschuti, which is live from Commander's Palace, true to the game, with the very funny Chris True, Midnight Menu Plus One with Margot Moss and the man who ate New Orleans, Ray Canada, Louisiana Eats with Poppy Tooker. Milo's Music Power with Kim Vu, the podcast about death, which is simply called Death, the podcast, with psychologist Dr. Arian Alfant, and also the inimitable psych ward with Dr. Ross Shields, who is not actually a doctor. You can find other great Louisiana podcasts as well at itsacadiana.com and itsbatonrouge.la. You can keep up with us on Facebook and Twitter and a bunch of other time-sucking social media as well. And all of it, we're called It's New Orleans. You can find photos from this show on itsneworleans.com and on our Facebook page. These photos are taken today by Ginger Loving Allison Moon. If you're listening to this show on uh, your podcast app, thank you so much for subscribing to us. That 
is very kind of you. Take a moment, if you can, to stop what you're doing and rate and review us. That helps other people find us. Our show is recorded live today at Wayfair on Ferret Street in Uptown New Orleans, where they have a fabulous happy hour here every day for three hours from three to six, and a fabulous brunch on the weekends, which is technically Saturday and Sunday. Happy Hour is a production of INO Broadcasting for itsneworleans.com. Andrew Duhon is out on the road. You can find him at andrewduhon.com. He might be in a town near, near you. Um, everyone else around the table here, thank you very much for joining us, and we'll uh, say goodbye to you from now, from INO Broadcasting and everyone around the table. And what else am I supposed to say? I'm totally lost now. Is that it? I have to stop drinking. Uh, I should stop drinking right now. We'll see you back here next week on Happy Hour. Technology Truths, brought to you by GEICO. Technology Truths. Truth. Teenagers can communicate entirely in emojis. How was the birthday party? Pizza slice, kitten, soccer ball, pineapple? Truth. It's so easy to switch and save on car insurance at GEICO.com. What are you talking about? Paperclip, shoulder shrug, high five, wizard hat? What? GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more.